Hi everyone, in this short tutorial we will learn how to implement search with a rec start in Flutter. To do this I have prepared a demo example app using the GitHub search API that we can use to look for GitHub users. But the same concepts are valid if you use any other search REST API in your apps. And when it comes to search, our goal is to have a good user experience without putting too much load on the server or compromising bandwidth and battery life on the client. So let's get started by looking at this simple working app. This uses the search delegate class to show a list of users matching the input search query. In order to build this, we need a few components. A GitHub search API wrapper class to pull the data from the GitHub REST API. A GitHub search result model class that contains the API response data. A GitHub search delegate class that shows the search UI with a grid of results and a GitHub search service class with all the logic for wiring up the API wrapper to the UI. So this is how everything is connected and because this is a short tutorial we will focus only on the GitHub search service class because it is the most interesting. But you can check the full source code on GitHub for all the remaining details. And if you are new here please like and subscribe for more Flutter videos. Ok, so let's dive into the code by looking at the GitHub search service class. So we will use this as a starting point and try to implement search in different ways so that we can highlight various problems and their solutions. So here we have an input stream for the search terms which are generated as we type on the search box and we manage this input using a behavior subject. And then we have an output stream for the result data and we use this output stream to show the grid of items in the UI. This class takes a GitHub search API wrapper as a constructor argument and we need to work out how to add values to the output stream when the input changes. To do this we are going to add some code to the constructor and as a first attempt we can add a listener to the search terms stream. So inside here we can add this code and the way this works is that every time the search query changes we print the search query, then we call our API and get a result for this value and then we add the result to the output stream. And while this approach seems logical it doesn't work very well in practice. Why? Because there is no guarantee that the results come back in the same order as the search terms. So this might look okay in my debugger, but if we have an unreliable connection, this is a problem that can lead to out of order results and a bad user experience. So let's try a different approach that uses the async map operator instead. To do this, we need to change the type of results to stream of GitHub search result, and we can remove this line in the dispose method. And then we can update our constructor by replacing this listener with this. So what this code is doing is to map each search query to a result that we get by calling the API. And because the search user method is asynchronous, then we can't just use map. And so we had to use async map instead. So async map guarantees that the output events are emitted in the same order as the inputs. So this solution solves the out of order problem, but it has one major drawback. If one of the outputs arrives late, then all the subsequent outputs are delayed too. Instead, we should discard any in-flight requests as soon as the search query changes. And this can be done with the switch map operator. Switch map does the right thing for us and we can use it in our code like this. Note how in this case we are using a stream generator with the async star syntax. And to generate stream events, we can use the yield keyword. With this setup, we can discard any in-flight requests as soon as a new search term comes in. But there is still one problem that is particularly noticeable with the GitHub search API. That is that if we submit too many queries too quickly, we get a rate limit exceeded error. This is quite a common problem with search APIs and the solution to this is to use the bounce. The bounce alleviates the pressure on the server by putting all input events on hold for a given duration. And this is a good way to wait a little bit until the user stops typing before sending an API request. And we can easily debounce the input string by adding one line like this. And we can control the debounce duration to our liking, where 500 milliseconds is a good default value. So if we open the console and we hot restart, we can test this out and we can see that there is a small delay before we call the API and the results come back as expected. 
And here we have it, an efficient search implementation that feels snappy without overloading the server or the client. Okay, so we have reached the end of this tutorial and I want to mention that this was heavily inspired by this talk by Brian Egan and Philip Hracek at Reactive Cove 2018. So I encourage you to watch the entire talk for more details. And if you want to use this approach in your own apps, you can find the full source code on this page on GitHub. Thank you very much for watching. If this video has helped you, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.